Hi everyone and welcome to this video. So what's this video about? Well I'm sure you've seen these things before. This is a 433 MHz transmitter and a receiver. And what I wanted to know was, are they any good uh, and what's their range? So previously I have actually done a tutorial about how to use these. It was when I first started the channel I think, it was a long time ago. but. That video shows you how to connect these together and to uh, program them. But anyway, let's move on. So what have I found out? Uh, what is the range and what is all this stuff on the backdrop here? Okay, well the first thing I need to explain is that um, it matters uh, which manufacturer or batch or I don't know, seller or something, it matters which one you get. Because what I've noticed is that I've got two different manufacturers or batches, if you like, of this uh, receiver. And what I've noticed is that one certain receiver, I had three of these, one receiver received much better than the other two. I don't know exactly why, but that's one of my findings. So, um, the one that I'm using down here, which I'll explain in a minute, is the strongest of the three. And there are two which are identical. They have this... Uh, this text and these images on the back, these two are not as good, although they look identical in every other way. So that's my first finding, that um, the batch or the uh, seller or something matters. And don't expect every one of these to be exactly the same, because they're not. Okay, the second thing is that um, I tested the range of these uh, without an antenna. and it was pretty poor. Um, it was around about 30 centimeters distance which is not very good. Um, so I bought these. Well in fact I had these anyway. I bought them ages and ages ago. And these are little uh, antennae if you like and um, pretty much you just solder them through a hole and, uh, and jobs are good and then that's all you do. And it does, it really does improve the range uh, quite a lot. Anyway, I'll explain a bit further now. Okay, so what is all this lot here? Well, to start with, these, as you can see, are battery powered. So I've got two 3.6 volt lithium ion cells. So that's, um, uh, what was it? 3.6, so that's 7.2 volts across here. So 7.2 volts, and I've got an Arduino. So of course that needs to be regulated down, so I'll just zoom in so you can see I'll show you what we've got here so it goes into a little um, terminal block then it goes to a regulator and um, I can't remember what the name of this regulator is but it's a 5 volt regulator uh, any 5 volt regulator will do anyway so after being regulated 5 volts it goes to the Arduino and you can see this LED here, I'll explain this LED in a second but um, just to show you the uh, receiver, it's there, and you can actually see the antenna that I've soldered on. So that's just put in there. There's the antenna, and uh, so far so good. Now, the yeah, like I said, I'll go back to the LED in a minute. Now the wiring for this, you can actually see in one of my old uh, videos, 433 videos. So I'll just go over to the transmitter now, and the transmitter is um, again the same wiring as uh, one of my previous videos, and you can see there the same setup, a regulator, um, and there's the transmitter, the Arduino, and the LED. Now the camera doesn't really seem to be picking this up, the LED, let's have a quick look. I can get this to zoom. I don't really know if that's picking it up properly. Yeah, it is picking it up. Okay, so you can see that it's blinking. So, right, I'll explain what, what's going on here now. So I've got the transmitter and the receiver. And five times a second, or every 200 milliseconds, I'm transmitting a message from this one to this one. Now, the size of the message does matter. Generally speaking, the shorter the message, um, the more likely it is to get to the receiver. And that's because they have a checksum, so um, all of these transmissions are subject to external noise from the environment. 
and of course as every other uh, radio technology is. But anyway, with this checksum, if the message gets corrupted by external noise, it's dropped at the other side because the checksum doesn't work out. So therefore, if you have a shorter message, um, there's less chance of it getting corrupted. So anyway, this is a five, I think it's five, a five byte message um, getting sent. So this flickering, which I don't know if you can see, it is flickering, and it's flickering here, then here, then here, then here, and it's flickering for one millisecond each. Um, so it's transmitting a message, and every time it transmits a message, it blinks. And then every time this receives a good message with a correct checksum, this blinks. So at the minute, they're blinking fine, which is a good sign, so it means that that's transmitting and that's receiving. And we've got no problems. But the whole idea of this is so that I could check the actual distance. Because I've looked before on, on, uh, on Google, on YouTube, and I can't actually find a clear answer on the distance of these modules. So, here we go. So, they're um, powered by battery, so I'm not tied to, um, to a computer on my laptop. And um, I've got an indicator as to whether it's actually receiving. And currently, every blink we've got here on the transmitter, I'm getting that same blink on the receiver. So, currently, I'm getting 100% of the messages. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this somewhere and then gradually take this away and I'll see if it stops blinking or I'll see if it receives half the messages or whatever. So currently it's about uh, 20 past 5 in the morning or something like that. I got woken up by uh, by Layla um, who's kicking in the, in the bed and stuff like that. So um, it's dark outside and actually I come to think about it that's quite ideal because um, I probably wouldn't be able to see these LEDs in the daytime anyway. So. Well, I'd certainly struggle. So, uh, let's give this a try. Quite conveniently, I stumbled upon these polystyrene box things. And it just turns out that the uh, breadboards, you can actually ram them in between the sides of this thing. And it fits them perfectly. Well, that's quite cool because um, there's space under there. And there's a little area to rest the batteries. And, um, yeah, that's quite cool. So, I've rammed them into these things. And what it means is I can carry them around without disturbing the wiring. So that will do. That will do nicely. So I think it's time to move these around now and see what happens. Okay, so it's about half five in the morning or something like that, and it's very dark outside. So I've just turned the outside light on. And um, so I'm at one side of the garden, and I think I've got the transmitter here on this slide. I'm not sure if those edge pieces are going to do anything, but so I've got one there. And you can see it's blinking. So now I'll just walk back. And I've got the receiver here. And it's still blinking, which is a good sight. Keep going. And it's still blinking. It's still blinking. It's still blinking. And it stopped blinking. And that started blinking again. Hmm. Well, my garden is around 15 meters long, if I remember brightly. It's quite long. And, um,. Seems to be coping pretty well, considering it's five messages per second. Seems to be working. Let's just put it over here on this uh, playhouse. Nope, it doesn't like that. And it's not really directional either. Hmm, it is working here. Let's try it higher up. Oh, it likes it higher up. Here is perfect. So at the minute, I think we're about 15 meters away, something like that. Let's try putting it on here. Nope, it doesn't like that. So it certainly likes it higher up. 
How about on this little shed roof? Okay, so it's on the shed roof now and it's uh, getting good signal. Very good signal actually. So that's about 15 metres away.